Hi. Today we're going to be talking about reserving and valuation for a life insurance company, part one. We're going to talk about what a net premium reserve is. For the sake of example, let's just assume that we have a five-year term product. These aren't really sold very much, but they do exist out there. There's even one-year term products if you really want to, to do that. Let's say we have a five-year term for the sake of example. And the time periods I am putting in here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, represent the beginning and the end of each year. So time 0 is really the beginning of year 1. And then time 1 is really the beginning of year 2 slash end of year 1. Uh, time 2 is the end of year 2, and it's the same date as the beginning of year 3 and so on. We can just drag this over. And there we go. So this is each time point representing the beginning and end of the year. So even though it's a five-year term, we have six time points just for convenience. The first thing we're going to need to do is figure out what the EC is. EC is what I like to call the expected claims. And you get this from a table. You get this from your 2017 CSO or whatever mortality table that you're using, plus your mortality improvement. I'm just gonna make up some numbers here. Uh, in, in year one, let's say there are five claims. That could be five million claims, five billion claims, depending on the size of your company. It's meant to represent the aggregate amount of claims that you're going to pay in a given year. And then year two, maybe there's twice as many, 10 million. Year three, again, maybe there's twice as many. Year four, 40 million, let's say. Maybe it goes up to 70 million, not quite twice as many in year five. Either way, this kind of represents how life insurance claims look. When someone is at a younger age, the probability of death is pretty small. Their expected claims are pretty small. As they get older, it very quickly becomes a, a great burden to kind of handle these sorts of claims. And it, because of the exponential growth in deaths over time, you stand a much greater chance of dying in your 70s or 80s than you did when you're 40, 50, 30, 20. Insurance, if you just charged the dollar for dollar amount of claims that you expect to receive to your policyholders, no one would be able to afford the insurance. And by year five, no one is going to be able to pay 70 million or 70 billion out of your collective policyholders, uh, but they could afford to pay $5 million pretty easily when they're younger. So what you do to make the insurance work is you create what's called an NLP net level premium. And this is the theoretical premium that you would need to charge every year on a level basis in order to cover the total claims for this group of policyholders not too hard to figure out. It's just the total claims that we pay divided by the number of years we're paying those claims for. So 145 divided by five is $29 million a year. If I just kind of say that's going to be the level premium that everyone pays every year, you get a graph on the right that looks like that. And that is, that's what's going on. That's how insurance works. We overcharge you when you're young and you don't have a lot of claims. And we put that money that, that, overcharge, that we overcharge and put it into a reserve. And a reserve is just a savings account that's going to be used to pay for your claims in later years when insurance would otherwise be unaffordable. Right? You're being undercharged as you get older because your claims will vastly exceed the premium that you pay. But it makes insurance more affordable. It makes it affordable at all, at all really. Uh, and this NLP is a key metric in any life insurance valuation, a starting point. The next thing we do is we we calculate our reserve, our savings account. And if you look at the graph, the reserve is kind of like the area between the red line and the blue line. If you were to figure out what's the area of that shape, and then the area down here, uh, it, that that's what the reserve is. And the particular type of reserve we're talking about here is, of course, the NPR net premium reserve. And that is just going to be the difference between the premium that we collect minus the claims that we pay 
on a rolling basis. So let me add the previous value there. Uh, so at the end of year one, we have a reserve of $24 million. I just drag it over at the end of year two, it goes up to 43. Um, yeah, it starts at, let's say it starts at zero, by the way. Uh, and then it goes up to 52, goes down to 41 and down to zero. So that's what is what is happening here. We're, we're putting money in a savings account and then draining that savings account as everyone gets older and claims increase beyond all, all reason. And that, that is how the NPR works. There's a lot more that happens with this. And, and the way it's reported is also weird. And the way it's referred to is also weird. The, the NLP, for instance, is usually always called the NLP in every document that you read from every regulator. The NPR might not be called the NPR everywhere. Sometimes it's called the life reserve. Sometimes it's called the active life reserve. Sometimes it's called the policy reserve because it belongs to the policyholders. It's their future policyholder benefits. If my old company Prudential, we reported it as FPB, future policyholder benefits, but it was basically a version of the NPR with some, some adjustments for, for other things. NLP is usually always called NL, MLP, NLP. And you know, expected claims can be called many things in different circles as well. It could just be called a, it could be called the bell if you're doing IFRS reporting, the best estimate of liabilities. It could just be called claims. Sometimes it's just called claims. Uh, it could be called any number of things if you go through the reporting documents. And then if you're running programs, it'll be called all kinds of different things as well. It could be called the unfunded liability. It could be called um, it could be called tab res if you're in alpha. That's, that's the reserve that you would get from the table, but it's not actually a reserve. It's the liability associated with the reserve, not the reserve. The reserve is this thing. The reserve requires premium to be taken into consideration, not just looking at the table. And then these impact the income statement in different ways. The balance sheet will usually hold the amount of liabilities that you have as a raw number to the extent that the insurance company wants to report them. So a balance sheet will have the NPR on it to some degree listed as FPB or, or what have you. The income statement has a different set of impacts that are mostly negative here. The income statement is going to have premium under assets, right? So the premium you collect is an asset. And then your liabilities go up according to both the claims that you pay and the change in your reserve. So it's not the not the reserve itself that matters on the income statement, it's how much it has changed from one period to another. So here you'll see that there, there's no net impact to your income statement. If you split everything right and everything looks right and is done right, and that, that's not actually how it happens. Uh, because there, there's a lot of differences that I'm not including yet when it comes to NPR reserves. But supposedly, if everything went well and everything was timed exactly at the same, everything occurred at the same time, you would have no net impact to your, in, your income statement. You have a gain in assets, and then a corresponding gain in liabilities, which accountants love to see. <laughs> Things that would theoretically not, not hurt the business uh, are great. So that's, that's a fully funded NPR example. Stay tuned for some more lectures and we'll go into why this doesn't happen in real life. Thank you.